So today I'm going to talk about one of these pathways that both Linda and, uh, and Danielle uh, <coughs> mentioned. And my, the focus of my talk is on impulsivity. Uh, impulsivity uh, this is a construct that all of you, I'm sure, can relate to. And this, um, it's one of the most commonly used constructs in psychology and in many other fields. And this reflects the interest in impulsivity by neuroeconomics, uh, psychology, behavioral sciences, and so on. These are all terms that often refer to the same thing, but they actually have very different manifestations. And one of the problems with studying impulsivity is that it's so multi-dimensional and complex. And we often mean different things when we talk about impulsivity. So one way, um, impulsivity is not only important for uh, drug addiction, as Danielle and Linda were talking about, but it's actually a very important skill that affects many other areas of life. This, this, is, uh, this shows results from one of the a large study conducted in New Zealand with about 10,000 kids who were followed up since birth until uh, they were in their 30s. And it shows that impulsivity and low self-control in childhood is highly predictive not only of drug substance use problems, but also of other health problems like uh, physical health index, um, in addition to uh, wealth, uh, um, people, kids who are more impulsive as kids, tend to have more financial problems later on. Uh, they also tend to commit more crimes. They're more single family, um, single parent rearing, and so on. So impulsivity early on is really uh, one of the most uh, highly predictive constructs for many different um, types of uh, problems. And indeed, uh, impulse control has become so prevalent, so important, that uh, especially nowadays when we live in an age where uh, food is readily available, uh, drugs are easily accessible, jobs are more, more sedentary, and uh, information overload with info, infoxication, everything that leads to immediate gratification. So this is a time when impulse control becomes actually a primary goal for the 21st century, the way that literacy was uh, one of the goals for the 20th century. So one of our uh, areas of work here at VCU is how to address this uh, problem. So talking about impulsivity being a multidimensional construct, this reflects most generally uh, the two main types of impulsivity. Uh, one is uh, impulsivity, looking at impulsivity as a more uh, stable trait dimension, which is typically reflected in uh, uh, personality traits that are, uh, as Danielle mentioned, uh, they, they are start developing very early and they're very persistent throughout life. And impulsivity is one of the most common personality traits that figures prominently in uh, most major theories of personality. Uh, another uh, trait dimension of impulsivity are its psychiatric manifestations, and it is indeed one of the most common symptoms in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, figuring in over 18 different disorders, uh, such as uh, childhood disruptive behaviors, or, um, attention deficit hyperactivity, conduct disorder, antisocial personality, addictions, and many others. So these are uh, typically uh, traits that develop early, are persistent, and are typically lifelong. And that indicates who among those kids could be a general risk for psychiatric or substance use problems. A second type of uh, impulsivity is the state dimensions of impulsivity that are more fluctuating depending on the different, on the current state of the individual. And these are the dimensions that are particularly important for drug use because drugs affect the state of the individual rather than the underlying personality. And they have become an increasingly, uh, research has focused increasingly on the state dimensions of impulsivity which we typically measure in the lab with various neurocognitive measures, computerized tasks that are created to simulate real life decision making or real life uh, functioning so that we can um, address. So these state characteristics, uh, in contrast to the general, uh, to the trait characteristics, they reveal some people who are at more imminent risk uh, at the moment. And they are the ones that can change with treatment uh, rather than the personality, which is uh, more difficult to change. But I'll come back to that and show one of the most promising uh, programs to date. 
So impulsivity, as we know, is one of the hallmarks of adolescents. Uh, most adolescents are, are increased re risk taking. They have preference for immediate over long term uh, gains, in increased discounting of future rewards and consequences. And they have exaggerated anticipatory responses to uh, positive outcomes of risk behaviors that put them at risk for maladaptive coping strategies that often involve experimentation with drugs and alcohol. That's normal for adolescents. It's, uh, that's actually a normative behavior, and the impulsivity, the fact that it has survived evolutionarily uh, so long, indicates that it has some adaptive qualities that we often do not focus on. Uh, but uh, it's normal because the adolescent brain is uh, still developing, uh, particularly the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is where the impulse control subserves in impulse and cognitive control. This is the part of the brain that develops way, uh, it's very late to mature, and it continues developing until the mid-20s. Uh, in contrast, there is a subcortical system, phylogenetically older system, the impulsive, overactive impulsive system, which is very active early on. So there is not enough inhibition by the frontal cortex to inhibit the overactive impulsive system. So that's why in adolescence there is so common, uh, it's very common to see manifestations of impulsivity. And it's related to the particular critical developmental stage that they're, um, that they're in. Uh, particularly, impulsivity is implicated in all kinds of addictive behaviors, not only in drug uh, substance uh, use, but also in behavioral addictions like pathological gambling or uh, internet gaming and so on. But with regards to substance uh, use in particular, impulsivity has bidirectional relationship, both as an antecedent risk factor, most common as one of these personality trait characteristics that persist, but it's also a consequence of chronic drug use. So if you continue using drugs for years, that affects your brain, and particularly those prefrontal cortices of the brain which are further uh, diminished and their influence is further diminished by the drug use. So this reflects the addiction cycle. Uh, in neuroscience, we uh, view addiction as a chronic relapsing disorder. Uh, characterized by uh, uncontrollable craving, seeking, and use of drugs, even in the face of negative uh, social and health consequences to the individual. So as you can see, the chronic relapsing nature of addiction and impulsivity is particularly prominent in the earlier stages of addiction, when, uh, the drive, when, when it's driven by the pleasant effects of, dr of the drugs, the pleasurable effects, uh, the liking of the drug is what is what's driving, and the craving is for reward of the, uh, associated with the drugs. Later on, as addiction developed, there is a switch in these motivational uh, factors where uh, impulsivity rather becomes compulsivity, where the drive is not so much uh, the pleasurable effects, but the removal of the unpleasant effects when you're not using the drugs. So rather than uh, pleasurable effects, the uh, craving is for relief. and you are, that's when this stage is characterized by wanting the drug rather than liking the drug. So basically addiction, development, the development of addiction uh, involves a series of switches between volitional use, from volitional use to compulsive use, from impulsivity to compulsivity, from liking to wanting, from positively reinforcing mechanisms to negatively reinforcing mechanisms, and from craving rewards, the reward of the drug, to craving uh, relief. So going back to the uh, particular uh, susceptibility in terms of personality, and we've all heard about uh, addictive personality. And I'm going to show you some research that there's not one type of addictive personality, but what we know is there are at least four different pathways or four different personality traits that we know are strongly associated with uh, susceptibility for addictions. Impulsivity is one of those uh, traits. The second one is sensation seeking. As Danielle was saying, these are the two externalizing uh, traits. But there's also uh, anxiety sensitivity, which is a sensitivity to, the, uh, to feeling anxious, to the physical sensations of feeling anxious. And there's also negative thinking and hopelessness or depression that are the two internalizing traits. So research shows that kids who display these uh, traits early on, they're at higher risk first to start using drug, drugs and alcohol early on, and then once they start using to quickly spiral into uh, uh, more maladaptive substance use patterns. These four traits 
are associated with different motivational profiles, different neurocognitive profiles, and with different co-occurring or comorbid psychiatric disorders, and with more specific substance use vulnerability. So here is a model that incorporates these four personality traits, as you can see here. In the middle are the uh, neurocognitive and motivational profiles. So as you can see, impulsivity is related to more to heightened emotional reactivity, poor response inhibition, which is the type of more motoric impulsivity, uh, which is associated with primarily with stimulant use, stimulants, and with uh, comorbid disorders such as ADHD, conduct disorder, positional defiant disorder, antisocial personality disorder that are more externalizing type of um, uh, disorders. Sensation seeking is a different type of externalizing predispositions that's associated specifically with sensitivity to reward and to the incentive reinforcing properties of uh, substances, similarly associated with stimulants but much more stronger connection with alcohol in particular between sensation seeking, and again with the uh, same um, comorbid disorders. The two internalizing traits, hopelessness and anxiety sensitivity, hopelessness is associated with negative thinking and, ne and stress reactivity, so there's a lot of the stress systems in the brain that are involved, and it's associated with mood disorders. Uh, anxiety sensitivity with hyperarousal, sensitivity to fear, threat, and loss, and uh, associated with anxiety disorders. And these two internalizing traits are primarily related to uh, more uh, to opiates, uh, sedatives, and very different pharmacological class of substances than the uh, drugs used by the impulsive people. So this is, uh, there is a program uh, that uh, addresses these four personality traits, the Prevention Program, which was created about 10 years ago by colleagues in uh, Canada. Uh, it is a very brief uh, intervention, two sessions of about 90 minutes uh, that are delivered in group format in schools, typically. Uh, and it was recently included in the Surgeon General's Report on Addiction as one of the most reliable uh, interventions for uh, adolescents. And this is basically the intervention that we're trying to implement here in Richmond uh, with about 30 schools uh, in the area. So uh, what characterizes this intervention incorporates many different um, uh, dimensions of cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing, educational, uh, and it's conducted in, in uh, group format, as I mentioned where the kids are not labeled as high risk. They're not told you're at high risk for this or that. They're told that they have specific pre personality predispositions to, uh, to respond maladaptively to certain patterns. So they do uh, exercises, they get to know themselves better, uh, they're presented with different vignettes, they come with their own um, suggestions to in different uh, ways of decision making and the ways that they can address uh, real life uh, challenges. Uh, kids really, uh, this shows that uh, kids who have been through this um, intervention, the effects last for about 24 months and now there is data for uh, 36 months or three years post intervention. So it, first it reduces, it delays onset of alcohol and drug use in adolescents and then it reduces the rates of uh, substance use in adolescents. The most uh, uh, beneficial thing about this uh, therapy is that it can also be equally well delivered by school staff, trained uh, educators, which makes it, in, makes it much more likely to be sustainable and uh, applied in schools. And it not only affects substance use outcomes, but it also affects internalizing and externalizing problems uh, in that it redu uh, results in reductions in those as well. Kids universally like it. Uh, these are, this is a word, word cloud of uh, uh, self-report. How do they like the intervention? So as you can see, some of the most uh, prominent uh, words are sharing, helping, fun, and so on. Uh, there's almost nothing that they don't like about the intervention. And basically, the, in conclusion, uh, there are th such interventions addressing personality and cognitive risk factors are effective in delaying onset and reducing rates of substance abuse in adolescents. Uh, the effects have been shown to last for three years. Now they're coming up with the four-year data. And the intervention is delivered, is effective even when delivered by non-mental health professionals, such as school educators. Um, and both, um, it can be effective when delivered as prevention, early intervention, or brief intervention for substance misuse. So basically the question now, now that we know that impulsivity is malleable, 
The question is not if to intervene, but when to intervene. And now research has given those studies with uh, the New Zealand studies, with the um, kids who are followed up, also the marshmallow experiments and so on. It's clear that uh, interventions can begin much earlier than what we're doing right now. They can, they can even be delivered uh, with kids. And there are some uh, promising programs, like on Sesame Street, there is uh, For Me, For You, and For the Future. There's uh, little games that uh, kids could be trained, because kids make constant choices every day of their lives, which further affects their lives. So it could be uh, very beneficial if, uh, if we could intervene early in the and hope for the best. Thank you.